Janelle Helm, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Really appreciate it. I uh, want to bring in now Judith Brown Deanna. She's the executive director at the Advancement Project National Office and retired captain from the Montgomery County, Maryland Police Department and founder of the Black P Police Experience, Sonia Pruitt. Welcome to you both guys. Really appreciate it. Um, Judith, I'm going to start with you on this one. And I first kind of want to get your reaction to what we just heard from Chanel, which is this is white supremacy. This is what it Definitely. is. The way yes. in which we saw things play out on Wednesday is, in fact, white supremacy. Chanel hit it on the head. I mean, what happened on Wednesday was that from the very top, someone decided to listen to Trump's words of stand back, stand by, and that's what the police did. And what we saw was what we have seen over and over again, that, black, that white people get protect and serve and black people get law and order. And white people even get protect and serve when they are trying to overthrow the government. That white supremacists who have decided to overthrow the government can get to act like they're on a class field trip and the police will stand by because their lives are too valuable and they don't even get arrested when they're walking out of the Capitol where not only did they rampage and, and riot, et cetera, but they had plans. They were shouting, kill Pence, yet they get to walk away. Meanwhile, black people demanding civil rights and justice and that the state stop killing us, instead get military tanks, get shot and get arrested and beat down in the street. This is totally about white supremacy taking over our country. We're talking about the response here, Captain, right? And the lack thereof and, and how it played out and specifically comparing the response to the riots on Wednesday to the Black Lives Matter protests. But I also want to think about the buildup and the lack of preparedness and how that played into the protesters that they saw coming. I can't help but wonder if they basically said, these are the type of protesters that, we are, that are coming and we don't necessarily feel like they are as much of a threat um, as they would be if in fact they were black or brown. Yeah, so great point because the law enforcement not only dropped the ball, they kicked it clear across the Anacostia River on this. And so then it begs the question, was this an underestimation of the group of people that law enforcement knew was coming that has a history of carrying guns in federal buildings and planning kidnappings of uh, the Michigan governor? Or was this sympathy? And, you know, in this country, we do know that it's no secret that police are sympathetic to these causes. It is a historical piece. It's been a part of the violence associated with black policing black bodies for centuries now, police have been members of the KKK and other white supremacy and nationalist groups. And a couple of years ago, we found police officers were still members of these groups through social media. So I, I you know, I, I have been sitting with this and it breaks my heart, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna echo my sisters. Let's call this what it is. It is white supremacy. And we need to identify it as such, we need to keep calling it as such, and we need to keep pushing the envelope about it surrounding white supremacy. We don't need to run away from that phrase. It is what it is. Can, can we continue this conversation? Because I feel like we need to, and, and, and I, do, I need to move on here, but, but this need, conversation needs to continue because we continue to have it and nothing seems to change. Mm -hmm. And I think for all of us,